passenger services on train lines are not, uh, it's, it's not a profitable venture. But what it does is that it has a multiplier effect in terms of its impact on the economy. Workers are sent quicker to their point of destinations. You know, they're able to move to work and do things quickly and return. So diminishing on the intensity of traffic density, the route in terms of the lifespan will be projected. So these are some of the things that you don't see physically. But if you factored it in to the gains, then you realize that you know, it's, it, it's worth doing it. But you don't really get a return in terms of profit. We did some analysis, for instance, by using, I think, a maximum of about 200 people you know, running a day for, and it's not much. We'll be making quite close to about, um, I think about 500,000, mm. 500,000, 536,000 a month. But the cost is in excess. The cost is about 700,000. So it means there's still a viability. Because gap. if you look at it, yeah. I mean, you have to maintain it. You have to maintain. Right. You know? And you're not making enough money. No, no. How no. do you maintain it? Yeah. How, do you, how do you run this sustainably? And that is why for, all, for over the world, all over the world, uh, governments get involved in the operation of um, a passenger uh, train in terms of services, you know, by closing that viability gap. Because this one, we're going to buy in full, you know. Absolutely. We're going to buy, this. We're going to buy full, we're going to employ workers. And we have built at least about eight stations on the line. We're going to put people so there. So guaranteed it will run at a loss? Definitely, there's not going to be, um, uh, it's not a profitable venture, as I stated it, based on the studies that we've gone that. You're not going to make one city, you know, for passengers. But when you start running the freight, the expectation is that that gain from the freight will cover this viability gap that we've seen in the passenger uh, around. Right.